Hi Scorpio, welcome to August. This is Teresa from tarotbyt.com and I'm getting ready to do your August love taroscope. And first I want to call in some good energy and create some sacred space around this reading. And before we begin, I want to say thank you for those who have for for subscribing to my channel, for those who have taken the time out to leave comments. I want you to know I read all of them and I really enjoy reading them. And for those who have ordered readings, thank you for your support. I I really love working with you. And for anyone new, welcome. If you've just recently found the channel and you're enjoying the videos, I'm really happy to hear when people enjoy the, the videos. So now, we're having a new moon in Leo. I hope you guys survived the last two eclipses in July. It was kind of a rough month. <laughs> a lot of surprises. A lot of changes, things coming out of left field. Well, they're not over yet. We have this new moon in Leo, which is actually not a bad moon. I mean, it's got, um, it's not as intense as the last ones. And it's a, an eclipse, a solar eclipse. And we've got a full moon in Pisces at the end of the month. So um, I'll get into the astrology later. For now, let's see what the cards say. What does Scorpio need to know? about love and relationships for the month of August. What does Scorpio need to know about love and relationships for the month of August? What does Scorpio need to know about love and relationships for the month of August? these cards. It's because I cut my nails. Okay, so let's see. The Knight of Swords. The Star. The Six of Swords. The Knight of Wands. The Nine of Swords. The Page of Cups. The Sun. The Five of Swords. The devil and the high priestess. Wow, this is a mixed bag. All right, let's see what's going on here. So you have the knight of swords. This is really crazy energy. The knight of swords is impatient energy. I think you're feeling really restless in August. Like you want things to happen and they're not happening fast enough. And you're just wanting to jump into something. Um, so you, this energy... You need to look at where you're going. Don't just react to the world. You have to kind of calm down and, and just think before you jump into something. This can also represent someone coming into your life, some speedy, because uh, the Knight of Swords can represent de like a quick departure or a quick arrival. It's fast energy. So something may be leaving, something may be coming. Um, you might be feeling like this knight, because the knight can be argumentative. You know, it's like you're taking your sword. You're going to fight for something. You want to fight for what you want. And you might be a little bit hasty, so don't jump to conclusions. And try to, like, tone down the energy a little bit, because um, you might be coming on really strong in the month of August. And you may get some pushback, because I see this five of swords in your environment. And that's a card of, you might be dealing with hostility or feeling that you're being victimized in some way. There might be someone who is not happy. Like you might be trying, you might be very ambitious. And um, you might get some, some flack. Now the star is crossing this. So if there's a, if this is a person that is coming back into your life or coming in a, you know, in the, like giving you the rush. It's someone who wants you to make a quick decision. Like, come on, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do that. But this person can be selfish. So you don't want this person to rush you. If it's not you with the fast energy, then it's somebody else maybe putting pressure on you. Maybe wanting you to make a quick decision. Promising you all these things. It may seem like, oh, the star, you know... 
you can achieve a dream. This is a dream you've always wanted. And here's this person. This could be um, an air sign. It could be, you know, air, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This person is very um, energetic and hasty in, in the way he operates. And he can be, because he's a sword, he, he's very intelligent. He has a good way of communicating. But sometimes he could be a little bit selfish, and sometimes he could be a little bit insensitive. Because the Knight of Swords, he's got an agenda. And he knows what he wants to do, and he knows where he wants to go, and he wants everything to happen yesterday. And sometimes he's so focused on his goals that he doesn't realize how his behavior is affecting others. But the star is connected to him. So he can help you achieve a dream. Um, but he's a challenge sometimes to deal with. But he also defends you. Um, he speaks highly of you. So he can be your... Um, it's kind of like your knight, your defending knight. In the past, you have the Six of Swords and the Knight of Wands. So I feel like you've moved on. Maybe you've changed jobs recently or you've changed, look, moved to a new location. Because the Six of Swords is like leaving a difficult situation behind, moving on to something better. So you've had this um, new adventure and um, I don't know if you're, you're kind of worried about it because you have the Nine of Swords here. That's the card of sitting up at night and imagining all these scenarios, like worst case scenarios. There could, be a, there could have been someone that you may have walked away from who gave you a lot of grief. The, the Knight of Wands is in, uh, could be a fire sign, like Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And this guy, um, he makes a lot of promises, but he never delivers. He's like a, you know, he's here today. You know, when he's there, you can enjoy him. He's fun. But then, he, you know, he's gone. You know, he's on to his adventure, and you're like out, left in the dust. So the night is about adventure. It's about a person who is... He's just looking for the next conquest or the next adventure. So this person may not have been that stable in your life. And you, I feel like you've, you've kind of, he's not as much of an influence. He's, you're moving on. You're, you decided to move on. He, though, is facing the past. He's still thinking about you. Um, but he's, I don't think he's going to be anything, um, I don't know. If he does come back, he can only bring you grief. you got this nine of swords here. I mean, if he came back, you'd be, like, worried about him. Oh, he just, you know, you're sitting up at night thinking. So I, th I think both of these people, um, out of both of these people, this person can give you more. This person is more unstable. But this person is not, is also a challenge to deal with, too. So... You come into August with a lot of mental stress, feeling like you've been victimized, feeling like you're dealing with these people or they're cruel, um, or maybe you're even feeling guilty about something. Sometimes the Nine of Swords is guilt. So maybe one of these guys is feeling guilty, one of these nights. And so you may get a message in August, especially around the new moon, because the new moon is connected to Mercury. And there might be an unexpected message where someone ex wants to tell you how they feel about you. Page of Cups is a message of love. So it's possible that maybe it, it's either this, it's one of these two guys may feel like they haven't treated you properly. It might even be this person, the Knight of Wands. And the person has been feeling regret and guilt over the relationship. And so, I feel you might get a message from him. And um, he's going to convey his emotions. He's gonna be, he wants to tell you how he feels. He wants to have some type of closure. 
or he wants relief from the guilt. Um, so you might be hearing from someone that you haven't talked to in a while, someone that you kind of left behind and thought, well, he's not influencing me anymore. He may come back, especially with Mercury retrograde and Mars retrograde. It brings people from the past back. The sun. You have the sun here. The sun is a card that no matter what you're experiencing at the time of the reading, whatever problems, whatever worries, the sun means that everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be okay in the end. Um, but you're, it's in your negative thinking sector, so part of you is doubting it. You're doubting it. You're just not like, no, it's not going to happen. You're just kind of being cynical. You don't have faith that maybe you're not trusting this message. You think, oh, this guy's, he's not being sincere. Um, and he does have, there is something, um, there are some issues connected with this relationship. Because you have the five of swords here. So you have been victimized by this person. He hasn't always played fair. And sometimes he could even be hostile. And manipulative. Um, so you might have decided, you know, to cut your losses and move on. Because he can be toxic at times. And you have this devil card here. The devil is a card of addiction. You could be dealing with someone who has a drinking or drug problem. Someone who has, um, you have a strong physical connection with. Like you have this chemistry that's very strong. And so when this guy calls, you're like, I can't, you know, I keep wanting to break away, but every time he calls me, I get drawn back in. This is a card that tells you, don't get drawn into anyone's drama. If someone tries to push your buttons or draw you into a drama, you have to not react. You have to just cut your losses and move on. Because I feel that there's a better future for you if you but you need to sever ties from this um you really you're still kind of attached to this fire sign in some way and you need to sever ties so that you can allow the new to come in because there is someone that's going to want to come in maybe not right now because the star is here the star predicts you know, fulfillment, but in the, like, long, t like, in the distance. It's not, over, it's not in the current space. It's kind of something that's going to be in the future. So you have to give it time. So this person may be someone that you may get involved with down the road. Not right now. You have to clear up this other issue first. The high priestess is in the last position as an outcome and that always means a favorable out there'll be a favorable outcome and you have to trust your intuition the high priestess means there are things going on behind the scenes that you don't know so you know you may think that this relationship is over you know and he doesn't care about you and he doesn't think and you don't know what's going on in his life he could be like tormented you know i've got to talk to her i've got to make right by her i've got to you know whatever or him Whatever the case may be, there is someone who wants to come back into your life. I'm not saying you should take him back. Um, that's something you have to decide because there's too much, there's like a lot of negative energy around this person, toxic energy. So you have to really um, go within. That's what the high priestess is saying. Go within and you'll get your answer. Trust your inner guidance. I mean, so if the guy comes back and you feel like something's just not right, trust that and don't don't fall into the trap. Don't don't get sucked back in. If you've broken away from someone that was toxic or someone that was not right for you, not healthy, maybe there was a codependent type of relationship. Trust your instincts. There are better things coming. You don't, you know, because if you're alone, sometimes when you're alone, you know. It's easy to fall back in with someone from the past because it's familiar energy. It may not be the best energy, but it's the best that you have right now. You don't want to do that. Hold out for this Knight of Swords. Because I feel like... See, this is also... This has a double meaning. Because the court cards, they mean, you know, they can have several... They can apply to several different areas of your life. In this case, the Knight can mean 
a person that's going to be coming into your life. But it also is warning you not to make any quick moves, quick decisions. So if this guy wants to come back, don't jump, don't jump into it. Just don't, you know, give yourself time to think about it. Give him time to prove himself before you come, you know, open up your heart and trust. Um, and don't give up on the dream. You have the star here and you have the sun. So you're moving in a better, you're going toward the future. The future is going to be better. It's just that right now there's a lot of turbulent energy. And so now's not a time to make serious decisions. Now's the time to just kind of sit back and watch. See what, you know, the wind blows in. Because Uranus is very active right now. Squaring Mars, squaring all these planets. Um, in Taurus, it's opposing your sun. If you're in the early degrees of Scorpio. So there's a lot of volatile energy. A lot of unpredictable energy floating around. You don't want to make any decisions when Mars and Mercury are retrograde. You want to just sit back and watch and see what comes in. And give yourself time to process. And so that way, um, when everything starts moving direct, you will see clearly. I think you will find, um, you'll find out the truth or you'll see the truth closer to the end of the month with the full moon in Pisces. Whatever has been, you know, buried under the sea is going to come up. Pisces is, you know, it's, it's the Neptune uh, energy. It's going to come out. Secrets are going to come out. Information is going to come out. Whatever's been hidden is going to be revealed, and then you'll be able to make your decision. But, um, so let's see what the astrology is saying for um, Scorpio. So, you've got the new moon in your 10th house. That's their house of career, and it's conjunct, conjunct Mercury. But not only is it career, it's also your status in life. So, you could be having, you know, there could be a new beginning. Either um, a new career opportunity, but also a new relationship that could lead to marriage or some type of per a commitment. Um, you have Jupiter in the first house, so you have that luck of Jupiter, the abundance of Jupiter going through the first house. It's going to be eventually moving into your second house at the end of the year in November, and then it's going to be giving you, bringing in you know, money, abundance. More, you're going to feel more positive about yourself. You may be feeling a little bit down. You may have felt a little down. Um, if your self-esteem needs a boost, when Jupiter goes into the second house, it's going to give you that boost. You have Neptune in the fifth house at this new moon. And it's, it's trining Jupiter. So it can bring romance. Um, but you're going to have to know some of, you know, one of them... Neptune can bring you a soulmate, but it could also bring deception. It can bring someone who needs a lot of help, you know, a fixer-upper kind of guy. <laughs> you know, where you're saving someone, someone who has a drinking or a drug problem or mental issues. And you feel like, oh, my love will save him. Don't get into that trap. Because you can't save anyone. They have to save. They have to want to be. They have to make the changes. You're, you can't change anyone. You can't save anyone. But you're in danger with Neptune in the fifth of idealizing someone and not seeing who they really are, especially in a romantic situation. Now, Neptune in the fifth, in terms of creativity, is great. I mean, if you want to do art, music, writing, Neptune is your friend, because the fifth house is the house of creative expression. So if you're feeling intense emotions, write, maybe you want to write poetry or sing or play music, get those emotions out. But just don't... Um, give your heart away to anyone that shows up without first letting them prove themselves. Because with Neptune, there's a lot of confusion and you don't know. Pluto's going through your third house, transforming your relationships with relatives, neighbors, brother and sister. It's also transforming your style of communication. So you may be a little bit more outspoken now than you have in the past. You know, you're willing, you're not afraid to fight for what you believe in. So you want to be careful that you don't come on too strong because Pluto is got very intense energy. So um, you have to wield that power wisely. <laughs> you know, it's like a fire hose. You have to control it. Um, the full moon happens in Pisces at three degrees. And that's in your fifth house. So like I said, 
at the end of the month, the truth is going to come out. And then you're going to see a lot of truths, not only romance, but friendships, groups you belong to. You're going to figure out who you need to keep and who you need to let go of. Because everything's going to come to the surface with this full moon. You have Saturn. There's a grand trine, a grand earth trine happening. And Pisces is favorable to Scorpio. You know, it's your sister sign. It's trine. Um, so this is good. You could have... You could see real results by the end of the month in, t in a relationship. Um, but like I said, wait for the truth to come out before you make a decision. Wait for things to be revealed. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that you don't know. So it's, you can't make a decision with partial information. You have Uranus going through your seventh house. So expect surprises. When Uranus is in the seventh house, you may have some exciting romantic encounters. They may or may not last because that Uranus is kind of unstable energy. If you're in a relationship and it's not working out, you may just decide to end it suddenly. You might be like, I'm done. I'm done with this. And that, again, speaks to the Knight of Swords, the quick energy, quick departure. Some of you might be just getting out of a relationship, like, I'm done, I've had enough. Others may be forming a new relationship, like out of the blue, some person comes into your life. Um, Venus in the 12th, you're still um, pining away over someone. You, you have like a secret love, or maybe you feel like you can't express your love. You might have a crush on someone and you can't tell them. Uh, well, there's something that, ha you know, about the relationship that has to be hidden, has to be kept hidden. Um, be careful because with the full moon, things may come out, you know, so you don't want to, if you're doing anything that you don't want people to know about, just be careful. Um, but there is new moon, there is new love energy coming. Um, but for some reason, you're stressed about it. I'm seeing this nine of swords. But there is very, there's a strong attraction, strong chemistry. Just make sure you know who you're getting involved with. And don't believe, you know, don't just believe people because they sound charming. You have to really check them out. Make sure they're telling you the truth. Make sure they're not just trying to victimize you. Uh, and if someone has issues and you can't deal with them, cut your losses and move on. That's what this card's about. This is about... I have to love this person as they are because I'm not going to change them. So if there's someone in your life that you feel really needs a lot of work, you may be better off just cutting your losses and moving on. Release yourself from this obsession. You might be like obsessed with this person. You can't break away. But there are better things coming. You have the star here and the sun. So whatever's going to happen, it may be sudden and unexpected. Uh, it may come out of left field. You don't know. With Uranus, you don't know. Anything can happen with Uranus. The thing that you never thought would happen will happen. Things you couldn't possibly imagine could happen. Um, with all this retrograde energy, you could be running into people from the past, old lovers, suddenly pop up into your life. Hey, let's get together. And you're like, where did you come from? You know. <laughs> um, so just sit tight in August and wait for the, the moon to speak. <laughs> wait for the new moon to see where the new beginnings are and wait for the full moon to see where the information that's been hidden comes out and then you'll be able to make your decision and choose wisely to build this dream and to achieve this because the sun is a great relationship the sun but you're afraid of it it's in your fear sector the sun is connecting with someone that you can really have a lot of fun with that you you know really makes you feel like a child again. It's like you you're just, you can breathe a, a breath of fresh air into your life, where you're just having fun and you just enjoy being together. Um, so you have to be open to love, but you also have to be wise and not let anyone pull the wool over your eyes. Don't you know all that glitters is not gold. So you have to look deeper, and you're very good at looking deep, Scorpio. So don't take people at surface value. Dig deeper. Find out what's hidden. Bring that hidden information to the surface. And then you'll be able to move forward. Now this Grand Earth Trine, it's going to be bringing abundance. 
and it's hitting what is it hitting your third house your seventh house and your eleventh house so partnerships and friendships are going to be very lucky for you this at the end of the month um, you may figure out by the end of the month who's on your side and who's not. Who do I keep in my inner circle? Who do I move on from? You're going to find that out by the end of the month. So I hope this reading was a help to you, Scorpio. And um, if you'd like to have a private reading, you can just click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website, and we can get you on the schedule, and we'll be working together. In the meantime, enjoy this uh, month. And um, may you have many blessings and love in the month of August and wise decisions. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.